and uh, he had you on a clip before he came out. Ice Cube was on there, uh, Jermaine mm -hmm. Jackson. So uh, I don't know if you remember that clip, but they had you. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We aligned uh, uh, with Brother Ali, student minister Ali Muhammad, who lives in Tampa, Florida. I want to thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come have a great conversation with us about your time in the nation and hear your personal testimony of what it's like to be a student minister and also work in the prisons. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa well, alaikum salam, Brother Josh. Appreciate you allowing me to have access to the beautiful listening audi audience of Off the Record, the People's Podcast. That's why I can I'm definitely honored to be a part of this history making broadcast, good brother. Praise be to Allah. Well, brother uh, Ali, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Well, um, I don't want to be long, but I got to lay down this history right on behalf of myself and my family. First off, I want to say again, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah who intervened in our affairs in the person of the great Mahdi, Master Far Muhammad. Yes, and we thank him for raising among us the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the exalted Christ. And we thank them for leaving in our midst a divine reminder, comforter, big brother and friend, and the eternal door to the eternal leader. And that is none other than the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. I greet you, Brother Josh, your family, the listening audience, in the greeting words of peace and paradise of assalamu alaikum. Well, now, with that said, first things first, you know, I have to say that put things in proper divine order. But I, I have to start off by saying uh, how I came to be a Muslim was through my beautiful parents. Um, mm. My dad, Brother Imam Mustafa. Uh, Salahuddin and my mother, sister Anissa Salahuddin Muhammad. And I thank them for um, hearing the voice of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and coming into the nation of Islam. I believe 1965 they came in. But I want to say this that my dad, who's from King, um, St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, when he came here from Jamaica to the States, he was already a, a rebel type person from my family in Jamaica. So they were like British Christians. Mm -hmm. British Christian Jamaican, those are a different kind of Christians. <laughs> be, that know Bible and verse in the King's English pretty exactly. well. So my father was, of course, the third child out of my family there in Jamaica, but he was always of the spirit of uh, you should and we should support whatever the enemy opposes and mm -hmm. oppose whatever the enemy supports. Mm -hmm. So he was already of that spirit. So when he left Jamaica, he was also skilled in welding. So when he came to the States, he got into the um, the trades and um, he told he always told me and my brothers and sisters that he was attracted to the Rastafarian way of thinking and he always saw something different in the scriptures as it related to us and black people he of course mm -hmm. was a Garveyite and he was very much immersed in those teachings coming from Jamaica Mm -hmm. um, the, the reggae culture scene at that time among the young people was very strong and very uh, revolutionary. So when he came in, he was in a cycle of changing. And when he came off into the States, they did a brief orientation with the, the Jamaican family. And they told them to stay away from the Black American. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. So since he was already about being kind of rebellious to that, he was like, no, I'm not going to disconnect from my people. So mm -hmm. he had that spirit. So he would um, uh, in interact with the Black Panther movement mm -hmm. in New York City, and he got involved in that. But then eventually he came in contact with the Brothers of the Nation of Islam and he started to study the nation of Islam and became a member. And 
my mom, who's from Sumter, South Carolina, they too had a, a connection due to the fact that the part of Jamaica where my family's from is St. Elizabeth is in the country, not like Kingston, which is the city. Mm. And my mother from South Carolina was country, you know, and she was the oldest of her siblings. And she was very um, interested in seeing black people get proper justice. So she left South Carolina and came to New York and they met each other, fell in love, and then the rest was history. And they too began to study the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as my dad brought her with him when he would go down and study the teaching. So that's how I, of course, and my family came up, came in contact with Islam. But on a personal note, when my mother was pregnant with me, I think there was some problems we were having with paying the rent or something. And I think um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who was um, over Mosque number seven, or the temple number seven at that time, got wind of it because my mother, of course, was looking kind of stressed and he kind of detected that. Mm. He asked her, well, are you all right, Sister Bernice? And, and my mom said, you know, we just having some problems, you know. And my dad, of course, trying to not mention that because every FOI want to be seen as someone that could take care of the business. But he, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, made him not to feel no type of way. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave what we needed to pay our rent. That's when she was pregnant with me. And she always told me that. And she said, whenever you get to meet the minister, please let him know that you are very dear to our family. And in that time, when they was coming on, Minister Farrakhan was the prince of New York. I mean, he was, you know, we all know the history of the impact the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had on New York City. So he has been a reality coming in, out of, in and out of my life. So as we grew in the nation, was growing to its peak and to its height, my, my brother and I went to Muhammad University mm. and it was a definite different educational environment and teaching because we were excelled when we was mm. with Muhammad University. This is before the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And um, I want to say that the minister is so wise because when he led us to the study of Dianetics, of Brother L. Ron Hubbard, the minister does nothing without divine guidance. Because when I was a junior fruit at uh, Muhammad University, we used to do something called TRs, where the young junior fruit used to have to sit in front of each other and practice self-discipline without laughing to give us strong, uh, to concentrate on discipline. Mm -hmm. And when we went, when the minister sent us to study over at the church in 2009, we saw that they had those study courses called the TRs. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. So we had that. So I started to see a connection there that where we was had to be of divine providence that the minister had us go there. So I wanted to put that out there so the believers watching can see that the minister is a guided man. Mm -hmm. And wherever he tells us to go, even if we don't understand it, we should hear and obey. And as you can see with the um, talk on the psychological condition and mental health in our community, we already have the answers and the minister was already ahead of the curve by guiding us to a tool that can help us deal with trying to just be ourselves in white America. So I just wanted to add that. But for me personally, and skipping is a lot in there, but I, I, want, I didn't want to abuse the time. But the, uh, when I heard the message for myself, because as the nation fell, it did a lot to the children of the nation of Islam during that time. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, oh, man, I, I heard you interview another brother who was the emeritus captain 
of Detroit. I don't remember his name. Majid. Yeah, he yeah, he Majid. He described it as if your mother telling you, I'm gonna go to the store and then I'll be right back. And they never return. To this very moment, John, that's why I thank Allah for the tool of Dianetics because the nation uh, had suffered a loss because we were so attached to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that he was our everything and we wasn't properly tethered to Master Farid Muhammad that would allow us to survive the fall. However, it was to fall so that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan can do what he did so that the nation can be resurrected and never fall again. But I'm saying that to say during that time you lost, you had, I believe, the, the start of divorce among the followers of the nation of Islam, which I believe surged into the wider black community because the nation of Islam was a foundational family-based orientated organization. And when the, na when the Honorable Mosan Elijah Muhammad departed, you had, of course, the family be led into Islamic orthodoxy under our um, brother Imam, may Allah be pleased with him, Imam Warathim Muhammad. Yes, A lot of the brothers got into the um, taking on more than one wife improperly. And of course, that, that came into my family. And of course, my mom and dad divorced and that left a lot of discipline out of the house. And so with all that discipline out of the house, most of us were already mature because of the high level of education from Muhammad University. We was not like the average children. So when we switched over, they, under what Iman Warfi Muhammad, they turned the MGT and the uh, Junior MGT and the FOI, the Junior FOI, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, mm. and we was uh, <laughs> a, 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 a Cub Scouts. So that was a culture shock for us, being military trained under the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad to transition to that. A lot of our Muslim families lost their mind, and a lot of them filled up the uh, mental institutions at that time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I wanted to just stop you on that so you can help me clear that term, lose their mind, because prior to 75, I mean, I, all I hear is that some of the believers lost their mind, lost their mind, lost their mind. Could you explain to us in like tangible terms or practical terms, what does that mean for some something that you've seen with people yes. losing their mind? Just that I had a case. When I was in high school, when I got older, I was around 17. No, I'm, I, pardon me, I was 16. I was in the 11th grade. And at that time, I was a part of a YOP program. And I was an intern at a hospital in Brooklyn called Kings County Hospital. I was in, I was in high school, but I also I, was, I had a job at this program called the YOP program. Mm -hmm. And they had an internship at Kings County Hospital. And after school, I would go to this program to work you know, I got paid, and plus it would put on my resume that I worked with um, psych um, psych patients because I was wanted to I wanted to get into that field once I got into college. But it was a YOP program, so when I would go to this program, most of the patients in there was former followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Case in point, it was a brother in there who name was Muhammad. He's well known in New York City. He's a well known brother. Hmm. His name is Muhammad Muhammad. Hmm. And he was in there. And he, he, he told me his name and he told me he was with the Ambulage Muhammad. And he broke down and cried to me because I told him I was a junior fruit and I remembered him. Uh, from Moss number 7C. And he said, yeah, brother, when the father left, man, it was like daddy was gone, man. I mean, it was, it was something. It was a lot of the patients, brother Josh, in there were uh, former followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
and um, they never was the same. Of course, with that medication, they they really uh, lost themselves because they couldn't cope with our father leaving like that. But that's why today the minister led us to a tool that to give us a safety net and what your show is doing. It reminds me of study guide number 20, where it asks the question, how did you, <laughs> when did you first hear the teaching? That's one of your first questions. Yes, yes, and study guide 20 takes you down that path of memory lane. And that's why I like your show because it's gonna do so much for the believers in this hour as it gets darker and darker. Those of us who desire to stay the course we need each other's testimony yes, sir. to yes, help sir. us get through this dark hour. But again, straight to your point on how I heard, but as the nation fell and most of the, the youth from the Muhammad um, University was out in the streets of New York City, we were in the nightlife because we was not allowed to be in the nightlife. The only nightlife we had was on Tuesday night <laughs> uh, with family night. The Nation of Islam was inclusive, but we were also exclusive. We had our own everything. Mm -hmm. Everything was our own. We didn't have to interact with the outer, outer community. On Tuesday night, we would go skating. And I think it's Josh and um, the minister's son, Josh Farrakhan, mm -hmm. and um, I may Allah be pleased with um, Lewis Jr., used to go, uh, used to rent out a skating rink in Brooklyn. Um, I forgot the name of the skating rink, but every Tuesday night, they used to rent that out for the um, Believers and the um, Junior Fruit and the Junior MGT. And we used to uh, have a social activity. Mm. We, we had, they had a real hug on us. The Nation of Islam was involved with the youth in every aspect of what we did, which I think Nationwide, we need to get back into that because the world has such an attraction on our youth. But yes. I'm skipping, but I'm saying some things that I want the, the listening audience, especially the young people and all, all, all of us to hear on how we kept a, a hold on the, our own youth. And that's how it was back then. But mm -hmm. as, the, as we was involved in the nightlife, we already had a fearlessness. We was in the streets of... Uh, at night because most of our parents <laughs> weren't home well, you know the discipline wasn't there yes, so as as hip-hop was growing that phenomenon started to take off at the same time as the departure of the honorable Elijah Muhammad hmm. depending on who you ask Minister Farrakhan is the origin of conscious hip-hop brother Josh hmm, hmm. because when he came out with that record a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. The way he did that song and the cadence he did that song, it was like he was rapping. And the way he was putting the lyrics, that's what woke up Muhammad Ali as brother, uh, our great brother Abdul, um, Rahman. Minister Rahman said, Muhammad Ali heard that record, a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. That cadence in the way hip hop was, was was growing it hip-hop was like that back then with the grandmaster cash and the furious five and who hurt and the way it was starting to grow in the bronx in new york city all of those children from muhammad university was in that life mm -hmm. and if you if if you ever research a movie called wild style a movie called wild style that was the one of the first hip hop movies where this genre was um, broadcast to the world because it was the new musical underground scene in New York City. And when you see that movie, most of the children in that movie were children who were in the Nation of Islam because mm. we started to get involved in the nightlife, the get high life, the party life, because we were so removed from that when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here. And when Amr Elijah Muhammad departed, the FOI class broke down, the MGT broke down. So we had nothing but to do, but to do the stuff our parents didn't want us to do. So as we were coming up, Josh, hip hop and Islam started to grow. 
then when Minister Farrakhan began to rebuild the nation of Islam, the, uh, the, the street scene in New York City at that time, it was open to Islam. It wasn't adverse to Islam. So uh, as the children of the nation of Islam played key roles in its development, this art form, a lot of um, the impact of Muslims played a behind the roll scene in many of the audience, like um, Grandmaster Flash, don't push me. Because um, a lot of that came from the way New York City was uh, culturally set at that time. So yes. as that musical genre started to grow, my young years were uh, uh, filled with that. A lot of the young people wanted names like Tashin, Akbar, Rashid, mm. and you had the 5% Nation. It was popular then. There was no internet, no Instagram. So we didn't know how other youth were feeling that love the art form today, which probably would have been similar, similar if technology was like that, Josh. Yes. But as the art form was growing, so was the magnetic effect of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on the youth because he used to be at an event called Jack the Rapper. Mm, mm, it used exactly. to be an event where all the uh, artists and I think movie people and the minister would minister unto them. So it's no shock that through the history of hip hop, Minister Farrakhan is the unspoken teacher of the hip hop genre. Yes, sir. Not yes, Christianity, sir. it's Islam and the government know that. Yes, sir. They know that. So as I was coming up, the first time, because as I was coming up, the Nation of Islam was in the, the direction of Islamic orthodoxy under Brother Iman Warfdeen Muhammad. So, uh, you know, I wasn't attracted to the kufi in the bed thing. <laughs> My mother stayed with the Abelaj Muhammad. My father went with the, you know, Sunni Islam, and, and we respect it, and it has its place. But I, for me and my brother, we wasn't into that. We was into the more example, and the five percent nation played a part, which keeping a lot of the youth and mental uh, faculties intact. In Many of the youth joined the five percent nation, and it wasn't like the five percent nation that you have today, where it was like a hip hop uh, attraction. No, these young brothers were studying the lessons. It was real at that time. So a lot of the music and the language like word is bond, all that came from the, the supreme wisdom lessons that the youth would use. There was a brother that used to frequent my neighborhood. His name was brother Jamel Shabazz. He's called the um, hip hop photographer. Hmm. He's well known in the world of photography. If you look him up, Jamel Shabazz, he used to come in and out of the neighborhood where we was at as young people. And he had the FOI image. He was clean cut. He was always talking positive. He was a um, corrupt, um, um, correctional officer at Rikers Island, which mm. is a prison in New York City. And he would come and he would ride the trains at night and take pictures of young people. And he, I mean, he, he has a, a, a filmography, a picture, pic, pictography of his pictures that he took of the 80s, the early 80s coming up. Um, if you research him, his name is Brother Jamel Shabazz. And he, of course, was um, a, a follower of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He wasn't registered, but he um, um, studied the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And he always would remind us, brothers, y'all shouldn't be out here fighting. He used to send light and stuff. And I'm saying that to those of us like yourself, Josh, who grew up in the nation with Muslim parents, sometimes you can feel like, man, you know, Islam don't let you do nothing. Uh, yes, sir. You feel like you're not normal. You feel I was, you know, we suffered a lot of neglect from my friends, especially I was fighting every day, you know, because <laughs> I wasn't a Muslim, I was a Muslim and, you know, I wasn't Christian, I didn't eat pork. So we fought every day. And it wasn't like it was popular with what was the normal Christianity, Christmas, and all that stuff. We didn't celebrate that. So we felt ostracized, and it was a lot of neglect. So through that time, but as hip hop grew, 
our friends who grew up Christian wanted to know more about Islam. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, man, I wish I knew more. But some of my father's brothers and my father would tell us, oh, stay away from the nation. And Mr. Farrakhan was just rebuilding the nation. That's that darkness, they would say. I was like, wow, okay, boom, you know. Then I, where, I, where we lived at, which is in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, on the block, my mother had a brownstone. Her and my father was not together, but on the block where I grew up with my mother, right down the street was a place called Friendship Baptist Church, hmm. where Minister Farrakhan used to frequent that church, and he did his historic ministerial series called um, the uh, Christ. I forgot the name, Brother John. The, True Christian Love, Seven Speeches. No, not, not, not that. It was, um, uh, but those are those tapes back then. Those are good yes, things to get. Diamond Among Men, that's another one to get. Yes, uh, um, wow. I forgot. He did a, he did a series on Jesus back mm -hmm. then. And the Muslims used to be coming to Friendship Baptist Church. And I used to walk past me and my brother. And we used to act like, oh, I already know Islam, you know. We thought we had it, you know. We wasn't practicing, but we thought, oh, okay, I already know that. You know, we already been through that. So that was the way our mindset was. Then as we were coming up, there was a club called Latin Quarters. This was around 87, 88. Around that time, you had Rakim, Eric B. and Rakim just coming out. And um, uh, groups like KRS-One, Big Daddy Kane, who was from our neighborhood. So during that time, we was at the uh, club one night. And during that time, you couldn't wear jewelry. You couldn't wear um, like sheepskin coats. You was getting robbed. That's just the way it was, right? Mm -hmm. I'm bringing this up because hip hop had no type of like, it, it was it was no it was wild it was they called it the hip-hop golden age hmm. so as we were at the club one night or usually at the club that night bro the, the the brothers who was the um the stick-up artists the the people who robbed people and all that stuff that would be going on in the club while we're in there so hmm. me and my brother was watching you know we would go and this was the normal thing then they announced this group called Public Enemy. They was performing that night. Mm -hmm. The pushers, the addicts, the drug dealers, all of them, when they came on the stage, Josh, all of the, the robbing and all of that stopped. When they saw the S1Ws and mm -hmm. Chuck D with his melodic voice, and he wasn't just rapping his songs, he was talking in between the songs said the government have us set up for the war. All the stuff that Minister Farrakhan was saying, yes, sir. he was saying in the in between songs, and he had songs like My Uzi Weighs a Ton and, and the Discipline of the FOI Drilling. Me and my brother was looking at the brothers who usually rob and steal during while the club is going on. All of them was at attention. Hmm. So I'm looking at this. I said, if these brothers is at attention while they talking, there must be something to this. So I started to be an avid listener to Public Enemy. Hmm. The follow-up Farrakhan. Don't tell me if you understand until you hear the man. So I got excited about, oh man, so I got all this stuff. Then there was a killing in 1989 or 88 of a brother named Yusuf Hawkins hmm. and Minister Farrakhan and and around the time when Tawana Brawley was raped, a black woman, Minister Farrakhan, Al Sharpton, the Nation of Islam, they would do protests and, you know, because they killed our brother unjustly, some whites. So it was a real hot scene during those times, 88, 89. Man, I, I'm sorry, I should have went back to 1985 with Madison Square Garden. That was another thing that happened that caused everything to be on fire. But nevertheless, to suffice it to say, when Public Enemy would mention Minister Farrakhan, it made me research. It just turned on a fire in me. And I saw how the, 
the strongest brothers in the neighborhood responded to Public Enemy in a different kind of way. Not that Rakim's music didn't do that, but the discipline of the FOI in some kind of way, the way Chuck D presentation was, it was kind of, it was different than Rakim. So that definitely had a profound effect on me. And then at that time I was into the rap music and there was a brother by the name of Ralph McDaniels who was our um, manager. He gave me my first tape, which is called um, The Black Agenda. Hmm. He gave it to me. I was at one of the radio stations um, back in 1989. And he gave me that tape. And um, it, it actually belonged to a brother named DJ Chuck Chillout. Hmm. And he gave me that tape. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just, I don't want to cut you off. I just want to show Sister Tracy said, Lake and Salam, Lake and Salam, enjoying the show. Sister um, Eugenie Harling's an interesting show. Thank you, ma'am, for the Nasir. Uh, Dave Muhammad says, Christ's imminent return. I think he was referring to the speech. Right, that's it. Christ's imminent return series. That's it. And uh, my sister Naima says, he's very, the, the man you were speaking of, the Shabazz, she said he's very popular on Instagram for his photography, many historic photos, and growing up, Islam isn't for the weak. Um, yes, sir, go ahead, brother. I just want to read the comments. All right, go ahead. Right, so I got my tape from a brother named Ralph McDaniels. Ralph McDaniels was the one who did, who who does a concert. Remember a couple of years ago with um, uh, the brother, um, with Dr. Wesley and the FOI drilled on the stage in Brooklyn and they brought out Jay-Z? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jay Electronica, right, yes, when he performed in his uniform. Ralph McDaniels puts that on every year. So he used to have a, a video show called Video Music Box. Hmm. And he was our manager. But he used to uh, study Islam, you know, and he, me and my brother, we was Muslim. So we had a relationship and he was our music manager. So he gave me my first tape, Black Agenda. So I was listening to Black, I listened to that thing to the tape pop. Brother Josh, I was on fire. I needed more and more. And then there was a killing of Brother Yusuf Hawkins. Yes, sir. I mean, the streets was on fire. The young people uh, rushed uh, the stores downtown Brooklyn, Arby Square Mall. Mm -hmm. We backed the police all the way to the uh, to the Brooklyn Bridge, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I and I was crazy. I was just so upset at how they killed the young brother. I mean, it was like it was like. I don't know. It was a lot of young people, and we backed the police office police officers back to the Brooklyn Bridge. It was going to be a riot out there. Yes, sir. So how did you um, How did you all see it without social? If something happens with uh, a police killer now, camera phone, somebody can see it. How did everybody hear about it so quick, and how did everybody know the circumstances of it so quick back in? Back in well, it was on the local news. Mm. On the local news, it was on the news on the killing and how. Um, the brother Yusuf Hawkins was in the Italian white neighborhood and he got killed. So, and his father was a, um, a Muslim with the Nation of Islam. And he, of course, was a part of the entourage with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, but even with Al Sharpton, because it, it seemed like it happened right after Tawana Brawley, the Tawana Brawley case. This was like 1988, 89. The streets of New York was on fire at that time with those two cases. And that was around the time when Spike Lee did the movie Do the Right Thing. It was it was similar. He built the story based around that. A young black brother was killed. Like how in the movie Radio, Radio Raheem was killed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that neighborhood is where I grew up. Beth, Beth Star, Brooklyn is mm. where he shot that. And when they did the Fight the Power video. That, that was that I grew up in that neighborhood, Best Stop Brooklyn. So that's was when that is when um I uh was becoming awake. I was still listening to Minister Far Conte. Then it was a brother who I used to um run with, his name was Ramel. We went up to Harlem to where the uh, meetings were being held, and for some reason we went on a day it wasn't there. 
then there was a place in Brooklyn called the um, Slave Theater. Mm. The Slave Theater. They had a rap concert, and this is when the rapper Gangstar was okay. just starting, and DJ Premier. They were just starting out, and their first record was mirroring Malcolm X speaking from a podium. Mm. That was what their first record. And the Fruit of Islam w was um, uh, securing this event at the Slave Theater. So me and my brother went to the event because it was right in my neighborhood. And during that time, Minister Conrad, the youth minister, was preaching that night, that day. And I mean, of course, we like the rap performances, but when Minister Conrad got up there, Mr. Conrad was a handsome representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And mm -hmm. he taught from message to the black man, brother. Mm -hmm. And he was going in, Josh. Mm -hmm. And that opened me up. I was tired of, you know, just the normal. I was just on break from college because I went to school in Virginia State University. And I was home for the summer and I went to that concert and I never looked back after that. And as I began to get, join the orientation and process, and then I have to say, Brother Josh, I actually didn't really see Minister Farrakhan yet. Mm -hmm. It was the brothers at the mosque that was deep and loving and strong. I mean, my my squad leader, he was strong. Who's so strong? I need his name was Brother Sean X. He's there in Atlanta. Well, you might know him, Brother Sean X. His wife and sister uh, Yvonne. Uh, That's the event. They, oh yes, sir. I'm the event. Uh, yeah, Brother Sean X. He was my squad leader, Brother, Brother Josh. He would come to my house if I didn't make the meeting. He would sit there. He made friends with my mother. He, he, he brought her back, the spirit of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I would come out from trying to avoid him. He'd be sitting in my kitchen. Mm. My mother be feeding him and talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I couldn't get away, Josh. So my brother Sean played a major role in my family and my development. He was my squad leader. Then my orientation offer was Brother Arthur. Assistant student minister in Mars number seven under Minister Hafiz. Mm. He was my squad, my um orientation officer, and brother, he had a beautiful way in bringing me along. And as I was developing at Mars number seven, um, my first Savior's Day was uh, back where it all began, 1990 in Detroit. And my first Savior's Day, I didn't have the money to go. But brother Eric Ture Muhammad, yes, sir. Yes, sir. he paid my way. He said, brother Sean, you don't have to worry about nothing. And then that was my first Savior's Day in Detroit. We're back where it all began. And I think brother student minister Rasu was the minister back then over Detroit back then in 1990. But that's the way I heard Islam and I never looked back since. Wonderful testimony. Thank you for your transparency, your great stories, and thank you all for watching. I want to say that this podcast episode is brought to you by my sister Miriam's book, ABC I Love Me, and her children's book, which is on uh, Amazon. My brother Rashad and his business partner, Jamal, video production company. If you all need something, street for me, reach out. And my second book, which is a children's book, Cleopatra, it is on Amazon. Make sure you all uh, get that. And if you all have a business that you want me just, uh, to announce, just let me know, J Imagination on cash app or just text me message me or call me i want to thank brother ali for the beginning part now i want to finish the uh interview i had a question i wanted to follow brother um sean brother sean from new york who i knew he knew me since i was younger but uh great driller great soldier love his wife but his children all grew up in atlanta so we love him his ain't nothing but love man he's still the same way down here he's still disciplined still strong yeah. man and i love uh I love his children, but especially Elisha, his oldest son. Yeah, he's so Yes, great. sir. Elisha, that's right. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Um, the next question was, did you ever um, fear for your life when you were in New York and received death threats for taking a stance by being in the nation? And if so, how did you overcome that? Yeah, that's a good question because when I joined for myself, 
when I joined for myself. When I was about to go to Savior's Day, uh, 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 back where it all began in 1990, I was getting ready to go. And then I heard some talking downstairs. And then, you know, I went downstairs and my mother was talking to um, well, my uncle. He, well, he's like my uncle because he was so close with my, my father. They were FOI together. Uh, Brother Imam Siraj Wahaj. Hmm. He's my uncle. Hmm. And at that time, he was he's the Imam over Mas Takwa in Brooklyn. Hmm. And we lived around the corner from there. And he heard that I was back in the nation and I was going to save his day. And he he kind of, you know, took me to the side. I told him, I said, yeah, I'm going to uh, save his day. And, uh, you know, I'm getting myself back. And of course he's the imam. He was just saying, brother, you know, just, you know, make sure you study, hmm. you know, study. And I think the work of the minister over the years hmm. in his wisdom, on how he taught the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under him and the affectionate and the non-discriminatory way he dealt with Imam Warfdeen Muhammad and their followers. And he, the way he handled um, Imam Sharaj Wahaj in their direction. Mm -hmm. of, of the different paths we took because Imam Siraj Wahaj left Imam Wallace Dean Muhammad and formed his own mosque several blocks away from Mosque Khalifa which was the former Mosque Number 7C which mm -hmm. was on Bedford and, uh, Bedford and Tompkins and he left some years ago, I think around um, 981, 82, somewhere there, they split. And he, he had his own masjid. So that masjid is still there today, the two of them, Mas Khalifa, the former Mas number 7C, and Mas Takwa, which is uh, under the leadership of Imam Saraj Wahaj, I believe. Uh, he still the imam over there, but he used to be brother Jeffrey Foyx because hmm. um, my mother was the, <laughs> my house was the centerpiece. My father would have all the brothers come over to the house. My mother would serve him dinner, and it was like that. My house was like the house everybody came to, and the area we lived in during that time, my father was the number. He was a part of the fish force, hmm. so he was well known in the community. Hmm. So. He was so uh, strong with his FOI work that when, whenever something was going down in the community, they called my father. It was a rapist on the loose in the neighborhood. My brother, my father in the FOI caught the rapist. Mm -hmm. Care of business, then gave him over to the police. Mm -hmm. um, in that neighborhood, you had George Benson, who was a, a musical artist mm -hmm. who was very well known in the jazz music mm -hmm. scene. Um, one of my my father's customers was Stephanie Mills. Stephanie Mills used to um, frequent the mosque when she was young, and she's a we we saw her Savior's Day twenty was that twenty eighteen when mm -hmm. she came on and said glowing words to the minister. So, but she grew up in the same neighborhood that my father and my family um, uh, we we lived at, and um, uh, Minister Akbar. I hope he's doing well. Our prayers go out to him that he so gets a, a, a recovery. He used to go out to St. Louis um, during that time. And my father used to go with him and another brother named Brother Rudolph to establish and help strengthen the mosque there when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was among us to St. Louis. So, um, but they thought that's what type of household I had. So Minister Imam Siraj Wahad was close to my family. But I stopped to say the way the minister's way and way Allah guided him, the Honorable Muhammad guided him to handle the family divorce between the um, War Imam Warren Muhammad and the Nation of Islam under him. He he 
dealt so masterfully because when I was coming in, the streets were still negative to Minister Farrakhan, like 88, 89. Some, you still had some strong brothers that wanted to hurt the minister. Hmm. So when I became a young fruit, I, I had to get out there with my papers. So when I would go to school, uh, I was in college then, on my break, I would pull out my papers. And I started to sell up my papers downtown Brooklyn. And this brother came up to me and said, if you out here with that paper tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. Brother, you know, <clears throat> for a young man, for an older man, to tell me that. I got to tell you, I was shook, Josh. Yes, no, I was yes, shook. <laughs> but I had to challenge my fear. So I, uh, the next day, I got back out there. But I also had some of the brothers with me. I let Brother Sean know about that. Hmm. And the brother said, no, we got to go out there, Brother Sean. My name was Brother Sean 2X back then yes, sir. before Ali. But... Um, uh, the brother, he never came back. I never saw him again. But I did see him again when the minister uh, came to Jacob Javis Center when he announced the, uh, I'm going to take a million men yes, sir, to, yes, Washington, sir, yes, sir, to, yes, to Washington, D.C. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That brother that told me if he saw me selling the paper, he was going to kill me. That brother was there, and I was on post, and I was watching him in the audience. That brother was applauding like something. He, I mean, the minister's way overcame a lot of the people who were just had a misunderstanding. That's yes. all it was, yes, a sir. misunderstanding. And the wise way the minister dealt with the, uh, the people that hated him, but thought they was doing a law a favor to want to hurt the minister, but the wise, majestic way Allah guided him through the way he handled um, uh, the followers of Imam Warajina Muhammad was masterful. And it, it caused a lot of um, uh, love to flourish between us more so than bloodshed. And over the years, my uncle, Imam Siraj Wahaj, every time he see me, he loved me like cook food because mm. I remind him of how he was. He was a very strong paper seller, mm. uh, Minister Ibrahim Siraj Wahaj. And I, of course, became a strong Final Call newspaper seller. And he would see me out there and he saw me stay the course. For years, he saw me stay the course of soldiering. And that, and the way the minister handled him, I, I know at that time, of course, him and the minister had conversations I don't know of, but over the years, the minister has, as you see today, he won over all of those brothers of his that they had a misunderstanding because Minister Imam Siraj Wahaj was in the ministry class under the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar. Mm, mm. Can I go? I want to go back to something very important for. Mm -hmm. the listening audience. When the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did Randall's Island in uh, New York City, mm -hmm. Mr. Farrakhan did it twice. He attracted, I think, 50,000 the first time. And then the second time, he attracted 75,000 Black people. I remember the one where he was brought in on a helicopter, Josh. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. The Honorable Mr. Louis Farquhar always the, was the man. Yes, sir, yes. But as I hear, he didn't want to take us a, a, a helicopter. But because it was so much people to come out to hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's representative in New York City, the people, it was, it was dangerous to bring him in through the people. So they had to get a helicopter to bring him down. How I know is because it was so many people. I, I got lost as a junior FOI. I got lost among all those people. 
And they had to bring me on the stage and say on the announcements, can Sister Bernie 5X come to the stage <laughs> and get your son? He got lost because they didn't know what happened to me. I, it was so many people. So uh, I was blessed at that time to, of course, uh, see the sea of people. But I wanted to say that the Honorable Minister Lewis Park, uh, his effect on New York City was so strong, Brother John. That's why I say that it, according to who you ask, Minister Farrakhan is the father of conscious hip hop, brother. And that is the truth because the way conscious music had to be stopped, like he said in 1993, it was a meeting of, in LA where they got together. They had to stop that because I mean, conscious hip hop and Islam as it relates to the nation of Islam after public enemy got loose on the music scene. As big as Carter B is and the baby and all of them is now, Public Enemy was popular among the young people like that. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, it was like, you know, and the way Rakim and all of that was, that was very, very dangerous for America who sees fundamentalist Islam or how they view us as a threat to national security with all of these young people talking about my name is Allah and my name is Muhammad Rashid and Bean Pie and um, KRS One talking about don't eat no meat. And you know, um, uh, uh, you had a uh, uh, tribe called Quest uh, whose DJ was Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Yes, I mean, this thing was on fire. I mean, everybody wanted to be a little Muslim. You know, this is when I, this is when I was in high school coming up. This was this was an atmosphere. It was it was friendly toward Islam, and that was due to the way Allah lifted the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to make his um, the, uh, his claim that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is physically alive. Because all of that happened after the minister's more than a vision experience, and after he spoke in L.A. Uh, where I believe 19,000 came out. And then when he came to Madison Square Garden, Garden and we um, filled Madison Square Garden and the Felt Forum. And I saw your uh, interview with Sister Sharima, <laughs> who gave uh, an outline of how that day was. I didn't go, but my parents went, but the streets was on fire because the trains was filled with black people going to hear the minister. I mean, it wasn't just at Madison Square Garden. It was down on the train station all the way into Brooklyn in my neighborhood where everybody, and then when it was over, every 5% of Muslim, they would have ciphers on the corner all the way up to 4 in the morning. They were smoking weed, some of them drinking, but they was talking about Minister Farrakhan um, launching power, people organized, working for economic rebirth, how... They said, we can get our own roll on and our own detergent and the way the minister laid that out. They was talking about that all the way to four in the morning, John. And I was like 15 at that time. I couldn't understand all these killers and brothers who was like, like brothers that was somebody in the community. You know, strong young men look up to brothers that was the, 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 the strong brothers in the community. They, they, was, they, was, they was talking about the minister all the way to four in the morning that night. That was back in 1985 when crack was out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't mean to digress, but those were important things that was going on to show the, the, the labyrinth, the effect of how the minister's work was growing and growing. It was just taking on a fever pitch from back then. So when you see the minister now, the minister is who he is. Look at him now giving out names. The minister said, is, the Amalaj Muhammad said, there's two of us backing you up, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only person that can give out names is Allah himself. Yes, sir. Not just the Honorable Elijah Muhammad backing them up. Allah is backing them up. So in him, you have Allah and the Messiah, the Christ in him. So he's been going around changing names, which is a sign of the authority that's being bestowed upon him.
I got to say that for the record. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was chosen before he was born. And guess what? So were we. And that's why he said at one of those graduations, he said, I'm looking at stars. Yes, and that's why your show is so valuable, Brother John, because you're getting to hear from everybody's testimony on how they came to witness this Jesus in our midst. Mr. Farrakhan is not no manby pamby leader. Yes, yes, this sir. man was chosen before he was born to have the effect and put the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his proper places to electrify the God in us. To understand that we could be gods too. Absolutely. This is a beautiful thing we're witnessing while we have him among us, brother. Yes, sir. Speaking of having the most honorable spark Farrakhan kind of among us, when what was it like the first time you ever met him and what were the circumstances behind that? Yeah, brother. When I met the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, I was on my deathbed. Hmm. This was in 19, um, yeah, this was in 2001. And I, of course, uh, had uh, got leukemia, which is a form of cancer. Hmm. Around 1999, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I had already moved from New York to um, Florida. And the time I moved from New York to Florida is when the minister made Minister Ben Chavis Muhammad the minister over Moss number seven. Yes, and made Captain Aziz, one of the brothers who was charged with being one of the killers of Malcolm X. Mm. He, he made him the captain, brother Aziz, Captain Aziz. But they, uh, I don't know his, his, his um, slave name, but he was one of the brothers that was uh, alleged to have killed Malcolm, shot Malcolm X. And he, uh, spent 30 years in prison and when he, he got out the minister made him the captain over Moss number 7 and during that transition I was the assistant student minister in Brooklyn at that time under student minister Henry and uh, with that transition um, I think uh, minister Hafiz was sent to Brooklyn and um, minister Henry became his assistant. And during that time, I was going through a rough divorce, Brother Josh, my first marriage. I was going through a rough divorce. And um, I moved from New York to Florida to try to see what I can do to repair my first marriage. But I had a lot of bent up rage on the failure of my marriage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I kept a lot in and I think, uh, that is what caused the cancer. And um, I lost all my hair okay. and um, I was really much, I was pretty much dying. And then that led me into the hands of Brother Student Minister Rasul, who I have to say is a rare son of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Absolutely, absolutely. It's the greatest time because Brother Rasul, as I was in the hospital, he prayed for me, brother. And um, along with Minister James, to the Minister James, who's also from New York, who's down here in Tampa. And I mm -hmm. think you should get him on off the record as well, Brother Student Minister James. And uh, our captain at that time was Brother Stefan. He's there in Atlanta, Brother Stefan Muhammad. And um, also Brother Stanley Muhammad. Who uh, is over? Who student minister over month number fifteen B? Yes, sir. He Thank was you. there around that time, and Brother Rasul prayed, and he prayed such a beautiful prayer in the hospital. And I think Brother Assistant Supreme Captain is his is Aziz now, right? Correct. Correct. Was on the phone at that time because he was. Uh, uh, a great teacher of ours in New York, and he uh, and I have a great relationship, and he played a part in um, seeing about me, and Brother Rasu played a prayer, and it kept me going. Wow. And Brother Rasu would call me on the phone all the way from Miami, and we would make a lot over the phone. That's why um, 
prayer is a powerful portal for us as believers that we have to get into the habit of prayer, calling up our God, Master Farg Muhammad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Brother Rasul, he would pray with me, brother. I mean, he would take the time because I felt like, you know, just sometimes you could think like you're a regular believer and you're not like, you know, I always heard Sister Minister Ava got cured from cancer and stuff like that. And I just felt, you know, I wasn't a top tier believer like that. You know, I just felt like I was just a regular jerk believer. <laughs> yes, sir, yes. <laughs> We're not jerks. I'm just saying yes, you sir. just think of yourself as common, like you're not you're just high ranking or whatever. But Brother Rasul had to kick that stupidity out of my mind and let me know that Allah would write the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and start it out by saying, best wishes to you and the 17 million. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of us mean something to Master Father Muhammad and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable. There's no big eyes in little use yes, sir. in this nation. For real, for real. We may play that game, but with Allah and the Christ and the minister, all of us mean something. We are preserved stones. Yes, sir. And I had to get that. And Brother Rasul would keep my confidence up. And then he got, I got so well with the medication and Dr. Aline was involved. And he would tell the doctors on what things to do to help them bring my body back to, to, to acceptance. I was doing chemotherapy. And at the same time, the minister was going through his bout with cancer. Hmm. So in 2001, you know, brother, uh, we, there was a laborers meeting and, um, I got out the hospital and Minister Rasu said, man, I got to get you to the pilot, man. You got to see the minister, brother, brother um, Ali, Sean. And that's when he learned that my name wasn't Sean. It was Ali. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because my father would be calling and say, how's Ali? And he would talk, and brother Rasu had to talk to my parents. Mm -hmm. And he learned that I was born in the nation. Mm -hmm. And I had the name Ali from five years old because when the nation transitioned from the world, from the nation to the world community, Imam Warthi Muhammad told the uh, followers to name your children Muslim names. Hmm. So I always had the name Ali uh, Muhammad Salahuddin, but I didn't use it when I came in the nation because. I didn't feel that because I didn't have it legalized. The legal name I had was Sean Rosenberg. Can you believe that? <laughs> Rosenberg, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> My mother from South Carolina, last name uh, was Rosenberg. My father's last name was Morgan. Mm -hmm. So my mother got jobs in Jewish people's homes, cleaning their homes, because her last name was Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. You know my family had to join the nation of Islam. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> but when the secret relationship between black Jews came out, I'm a walking witness that the Jews had slaves. Hmm. With that last name. So yes. that's what uh, my, my brother Rasul learned. He kept calling me Sean. My father kept saying Ali. <laughs> he said, brother, you... You got a, your name is Ali? I said, oh, yes, sir. He said, how come you use Sean? I said, well, I didn't know if I could use it because on my birth certificate when I came in in 1989, I, I used Sean. He said, no, brother. He went to Minister Farrakhan and told, asked him and told him, could I keep the name? Because it was causing a problem between my father thinking that the nation didn't want to accept my son's Muslim name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my father felt like, wow, they won't even honor his Muslim name and keeping his government name. So when Brother Rasul went and got clearance on that, that broke my father down to really started to see that the minister definitely is a man that he always knew was the one who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 
wanted to serve over our nation mm -hmm. because he couldn't understand that. And I didn't know that was big with him, but mm -hmm. it was Brother Rasul who fixed that to make sure my Muslim name was recognized on the books of the Nation of Islam. So I think a lot for that period. But Brother Rasul, during this laborers meeting in 2001, uh, after the meeting, they went. We went. There was a dinner at the palace, and he and Brother Minister Bia, who of course is our a great elder yes, in the, uh, Miami, he and Brother Rasul threw me in the car, and I was telling them I wanted to thank. Can I get a chance to thank Minister Farrakhan for helping my family when we were uh, having problems paying the rent? Mm that my mother always asked, could you ever get to the minister? Could you thank him? I was in the car on the way to the palace and I told Brother B.R. and Minister Rasul that they said, sure, brother, we're going to make sure you get to do that. So after the dinner at the um, palace, and I remember uh, I was sitting there with Brother, uh, uh, brother uh, Nuri. He wasn't Nuri then. He was Brother Damon. <laughs> we was all sitting together. And then the minister, uh, they brought me up to the minister. And I had lost all my hair. And I was very slim. You mm. know, I looked like a oodle and noodle, Brother Josh. Yeah, <laughs> and um, the, Brother Rasul told him about my condition. And he told him that I wanted to thank him. And I did. And the minister said, you know, son, you never remember the good that you do. Mm. But if mama said it, I'll accept it. And now I thank you, brother. And mm. then Rasul, Mr. Rasul was saying how I was uh, over fighting cancer. And he said, yes, brother, I'm going through that too. Mm. He said, well, brother, I'm going to say a prayer for you, brother, that Allah bless you. Because Brother Rasul told him that I was still in the work and I still was helping in the mission and was desirous. Now that I was out of the hospital, continue in the mission, my, my faith was strengthened. Although my body uh, was looking like I was sick, but my, my spirit was strong. Yeah, wow. And then uh, Minister, Ra uh, Minister Farrakhan uh, prayed for me. And Mother Khadija, she's a beautiful queen. Yes, sir. Mother Khadija uh, brought me the information from the brother who used to have this um, energy uh, nutritional stuff for Q5, I forgot, something that was well known to help that Minister Farrakhan, I believe, was using. She brought me the brother's number and she got me that medication. Hmm. Brother, I'm still here. So if the minister prayed, I'm still here, brother. So I owe a debt in gratitude to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for praying for a wretch like me. And I pray, Allah, that I never turn hypocrite and fall away from the act of Jesus as I had an issue with blood that he laid hands on me by praying to our father for me. So I thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, brother. Yes, sir. as do I. I want to thank Brother Nasir, uh, Salam, for your comments. And thank everyone for watching. Brother Ronald says, all praise be to Allah. And, and thank you all for watching. Brother, I wanted to ask you about Tampa, uh, Florida, your time there. When I went, that's when I believe I first met you. Um, and we just had such a beautiful time working in the community, drilling in the streets, promoting the Holy Day of Atonement uh, in Tampa. What was it like for you um, hosting the nation? And what was it like the city, the climate of that city uh, during the time the minister was coming? Well, brother, <laughs> I can say this, brother John. While y'all was having a good time, woo-wee! Brother Rasul, brother, I was on fire just to make sure everything was straight. Because you got to remember, we out there in central Florida, we're on the outer edge of the United States. Y'all in the south, Atlanta, well, we, we down the south, south, south. Mm. We at the bottom of the south. 
So uh, uh, Tampa, in Florida, St. Pete, Clearwater, that area, it the minister hadn't been there in since the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And he said that of that area is where you see the beauty of our dark brothers and sisters. That's how beautiful the population of our brothers and sisters are here in Tampa, Florida, and this part of the country are dark, beautiful brothers and sisters. And Minister Farrakhan coming at that time, this is the below the Mason-Dixon line Bible Belt, Bible Belt. Then you got the mixture of the Caribbean and our Hispanic brothers and sisters. So when I was building and working the community, the, the Indians, brother, the work the minister did with the um, Indians, with going into the Anipi, I reached out to all of them. We was hitting the ground, brother, mm -hmm. and they, um, they responded. We wrote them a letter. They responded. They, they got their casinos, but they know who Minister Farrakhan is, brother. They responded to our invite to hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and they said they would send an uh, a representative and they would send a delegation. We talked to all the churches. Um, there was a pastor who uh, was not friendly to us during the Million Man March. Um, I forgot his name. And he he went to jail for um, some having a, a, a extramarital affair with some woman. And he was over the Southern Christian Leadership Summit. And he uh, advised his followers not to... Um, support the Million Man March. Hmm. But when he went to prison, the minister sent a word in to make sure that he was safe and secure. Hmm. And when the minister came to uh, do the uh, 15th anniversary of the Holy Day of Atonement in Tampa, he played a major part, who now was out of prison by then. And he told us how he was protected behind the great steel gate, brother. The Amen. minister can send a word Amen. and he gets what he was what he says. And they they uh, protected him in the prison. Uh, his name escapes me, but it was a high profile case in the country. And he um, he played a major part in corralling all of the pastors to support the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan is such a wise man. He never goes into an area thinking he knows the local problems. He asked them to give me and us the report of what was going down, going on on the ground. Now, see, a lot of us on the, on the surface think that the minister came only for, at that time, we, were, um, we had a relation, the relationship with the Church of Scientology. The minister did not come to Tampa only just for that. Although their headquarters is right across the water in uh, Clearwater. Yes, no, he was concerned about our people there. And he was definitely concerned about what to say to our people that he can resurrect the dead on the outskirts of the United States in an area where he had not come since the early 80s. Hmm. That's how long he hadn't been in Tampa, in the uh, central Florida area, where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that he has wicked, the most of his wickedest enemies is in Florida. Boca mm. Raton and big high profile Jews mm. live here. This is their playground. This is the porch that leads to the Caribbean, to South America, to where their playground is. But the people responded, brother. It looked like it wasn't going to be packed. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will not be denied. And during that time, it was a pastor in Gainesville, Florida, who burned the Holy Quran. Hmm. And he talked about it. And for some reason, you can't find that Holy Day of Atonement celebration on YouTube nowhere. I don't know why. Hmm. Also, right here in Tampa, you have... Uh, McDill Air Force Base where they are controlling the drones that's over there in uh, Syria and Yemen. That's where they control it from. So I don't know why you can't see that celebration on YouTube at all, that 
15th mm. anniversary celebration. But it was, as the final call said, uh, given the report of that Holy Day of Atonement, it was triumph in Tampa. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was successful in raising the consciousness of our people. And to this day, we're still working to build off that work. It's nine, it was nine years ago, but um, I got to get with Brother Student Minister Carlos because I got a cache of plaques and um, all type of um, things that people gave that we could give to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that Brother Rasul didn't get to give to the minister. Um, but I have it all. I want I got to get with Brother Student Minister Carlos so that we can have it in our archives so the family can see as we go through the years of the Holy Days of Atonements in our catalog, that the minister was re respected by the government officials. He was, he was not uh, disrespected. He was well received coming into this city um, during that time. So brother, we, we, would, we was on the ground, but I gotta say this, the week that when we was pushing the tickets, your father came down with the army brigade, brother John. <laughs> <laughs> Minister Sharif came down with a two man loads of brothers and they helped us get the word out. I mean, your father came down. I mean, we were like, praise be to Allah. Yes. And he came down during the week and we was just pushing. But brother, he's the only one that came down. And he helped us push this thing over the top. Boss number 15 under his charge came down. I don't know if you was on that detail, but he came with the army brigade of the fruit of Islam to help push to make sure the seats was filled to hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I, that's a salute to your dad. And also your dad came down another time when I was made the student minister over St. Petersburg. In 2014, we invited him down and he gave such an inspirational you know, talk to us. He told us, brother, y'all need a build. <laughs> he, he inspired us so strong, brother. We found a building. And well, you get, that's a credit to your dad. He's just that kind of action-filled, spirit-filled believer. He may be not a man of many words, but he's a man of action yes, yes, yes. in all my years watching your father you know and i always was the type of believer that hated this new york southern like thing they got you know this thing of you from new york and the south thing you know because you know i mean we are a nation yes, i hate yes. that sometimes i hate to say because i had to learn the southern way as I grew up in New York and began to work down here, I, I had to try to bust that bubble because there's such a disconnect because the white northerner hated the white southerner and we take on their urine, their skunk smell, and we can't unite brother to brother, sister to sister, because we keep playing these plantation games. It don't matter where you at. Like Brother Rock Kim said, it ain't where you're from, it's where you at. You say, we yes. got to be nation-minded. Of course, we got our different regions, but the work requires men, women, children. All of the above can be accomplished with very little study if we all put our hands on the plow. And we don't have to be set tripping. No, we... We have a same creed. I bear witness is no God but Allah. Who came in the person of Master Rahab Muhammad? Most Ahmadinejad Muhammad is the Christ, the Messiah. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is their divine reminder. That's our creed. Yes, sir. We go to work, man. But yes, the minister came and Allah blessed him to triumph in Tampa for the 15th anniversary of the Holy Day of Atonement. I'm glad the believers had a beautiful time. And I thank Allah that I played a part of that history for our mighty nation of Islam. Praise be to Allah. What, um, what would you like your legacy to be, Brother Ali? My a legacy. Well, the minister said you can't put a period to a test data. 
until he departs. Yes, sir. So yes, I'm sir. still writing it. And, um, you know, I feel there's more that I could do. As you heard, we heard the minister speak this say um, this Holy Day of Atonement. We have to atone to Master Far Muhammad, his Christ and his minister. He saved our wretched behinds. The minister said that day that I guess Christ Universal Temple wasn't filled like it should have. That's a sign that we uh, are engaging in sin. And we're not as we was. And see how we light up when you ask that question? What was it like when you first heard the teaching? <laughs> All of the people you asked that, even me, you got me hyped. Like I want to grab five bundles yes. right now because I'm going over, as they say in Dianetics, go back to the beginning, yes, go sir. over it again and pick up additional data that you can contact. We got to go over it again. It's 2000, 2019. Nine represents a completion. We got to go into 2020, which is vision. We can't see the vision with guilt on our spirit. John, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, see, sir. when you sinning, you get guilty and you feel you want to put a fig leaf on and you want to hide when you hear the footsteps of God coming. I'm talking about myself, brother. All of us are falling in a state of lethargy while the minister is praying like he's in the garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to his sweat, blood is sweating from his brow and asking Allah to give us a stay because these weather patterns are not letting up. The U.S. Navy this year said that the UFO phenomenon is, is real. So then if they admit that the UFO, UFO phenomenon is real, then that means that the minister's more than a vision-like experience back in the 19, 1985 when they said he was a nut for seeing spaceships and, and a nut for hearing the Amr Elijah Muhammad. If they admit in 2019 that he was that UFOs are real, then that means everything else he said, Mr. Farrakhan, is right. That means they're admitting that Minister Farrakhan's been telling the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the UFOs are real, the Muhammad Elijah Muhammad is alive when he said that that's real. Excuse my passion, but oh, no, Josh, no, I mean, legacy, I just want to be seen as a brother doing this work. I don't want to uh, ever take my hand off the plow. The minister's up in age and he's still kicking hard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want that spirit like when I first came in. That's and like some like Brother Minister Ishmael was saying, some people like, oh, I heard that before. Yeah, you heard it before, but have are you doing what you heard? Your energy comes from doing the word. When we first heard the word, we was doing the word. I know everybody heard enough, enough teaching today because today is Sunday. <laughs> if you went to the mosque or <laughs> pulled down the webcast, but I just got to put down in history on this recording that I spoke up for the work in this hour, that if the minister's saying that we're, we're falling away, we have to pick up the pace because the nation will never fall again. Some of us may fall, but no. With your show, the young people listening, the believers listening, they want energy and something to help keep their battery going because guess what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, is coming up, and we got to keep fighting Satan within ourselves every day. And Satan is not stopping. He's okay. trying to distract us from the great reward that we are to receive after Allah removes the devil off our planet, brother. Well, well, well I want to thank you, uh, brother, uh, student minister, for inspiring us and giving us a great history. And I want to thank everyone for watching and who's... Uh, Washington. Brother Josh. Yes, sir. But, um, can I say one more thing? I, I want to say this before I, you, um, I go um, about a marriage. I'm about to celebrate my 13th wedding anniversary coming up in a week. And I want to thank Allah for my MGT wife. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Rashida Tanya Muhammad. Oh, okay. Working with me. And I thank Allah for my FOI class, and I thank Allah for her MGT class, because without this 
level of wisdom we get every Monday. And I'm going to strive to make every Monday, but I do make my class. But that class is helping me to be a brother, better brother to my wife. And I thank my wife for putting up with me. And I thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan wisdom. Yes, sir. Because I have children from my first marriage. And my children's mother from my first marriage, we were young when we first got married and we came into Islam together. She's right there in mosque number 15. Mm. Her name is Sister Alicia uh, Muhammad. And my daughter, uh, you might see her at the mosque, Sister Nalia. Uh, that's my daughter from yes, her. Sir. I'll, look, I'll pay attention now. Yes, sir, now she said that. Yeah, she's there at Mars 15. And I just want to thank Allah for the wisdom because we just didn't have good guidance. Yes, sir. And I suffered a divorce, brother um, Josh. And I could say with the minister's teachings on marriage and how to understand this great commitment, the uh, courtship teaching. If you follow that, we can have better marriages. And we have to be industrious as brothers and get out of being lazy. You cannot take on fathership and be a good husband if you don't work to your knuckles bleed. Yes, a woman can tolerate a man working and coming home and doing the best he can, even though she may make more money than us. But if we're striving, to be better brothers, she can work with us because she knows that we're under attack. And if, if they're coming against masculinity, the best way to learn about masculinity is an FOI class. Yes, the best way to learn about femininity and this a gay agenda they're dropping, Allah already gave us FOI class and MGT class. So we got to get out there and make all men and boys join the FOI because the enemy is trying to make them join homosexual class. <laughs> so we got a lot of work to do, but I just wanted to say uh, for on your show to the believers, young believers who's thinking about marriage, in marriage, in courtship, a Muslim marriage can be achieved if you make a commitment to live the life the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is teaching us. Mm. And if you suffer the divorce, stay in your children's life. Make friendships with the mother. If you didn't get along with her, find a way to atone so that you can better have relations, better relations with her, and she can download the love that you have for your child through the mother. You have to be able to understand the dynamic of how the mother affects the children, and we have to be wise on how we do that. And I thank a lot for my wife now because I have a better second marriage because I learned the lessons of my first marriage. And I remember Brother Minister Rasul told my wife, become good friends with my first wife because he has children from you. Mm. And as long as you two relate well, those children will respect my new wife and the children will um, understand the father and it works to mend that situation because divorce hurts children. That's why Allah hates divorce. But Allah uh, had me to experience that. But I wanted to give that lesson to your listening audience and any believers going through that, that they can come through it if we use the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and it's taught by the minister. Praise be to Allah. Well, thank you, sir, for dropping some serious knowledge on us today. And I uh, just want to thank your family for their sacrifice. And thank you, uh, Brother Ali, for your continued sacrifice. And on behalf of myself and my family and uh, our listener audience, we want to extend the greetings to you. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. And brother, I definitely want to continue to financially support this platform oh, because this is going to do so much for the believers in this dark hour because I'm an avid listener and I enjoy seeing and hearing from believers I've seen all the years of my time in the nation and just didn't know their story. And I got a greater appreciation for those believers 
uh, that you have interviewed because it's just a beautiful thing to see how God is bringing us where we are and giving us the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who's like a mother that bring us all together. Yes, sir. So thank you, Brother Josh. And, thank you, um, sir. Be in touch. Yes, sir. Brother, you got my support, good brother. Praise be to Allah. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir.